In this video, I'm going to show you all the steps that I used to restore this 1930s Charles Parker Model 975 Vice. So recently, a friend of mine asked if I wanted a vice that he had sitting around in his shed. And uh, I said, sure, why not? Always looking for some new piece of equipment. And when I took a look at it, I didn't know if it was worth saving. It looked like there was a broken brace piece right here. It was rusted. Uh, it wouldn't swivel. The swivel was, was locked. Uh, it, was, it was pretty rusty. Um, but um, I thought, why not take a shot? Uh, it was a Charles Parker, as you can see, model 975 vice, weighing in at 105 pounds. And uh, so the first thing I did was try to uh, free up the swivel base, a little bit of WD-40, and uh, actually uh, it came out quite easy. Um, so I was happy to see that. Started swiveling after that nut came off. Checked the threads on the inside to make sure there was nothing bad uh, or cracked or anything. The threads looked good. Uh, so I proceeded to, to move forward with it, um, began to use a wire brush to uh, kind of clean up the size and everything. Uh, one thing that I noticed was that um, after removing like the initial rust and maybe the, uh, the old paint that was on there, there were several spots where you could actually see Bondo. Like they used Bondo in the, in the casting uh, whenever there was a, a, a gap. Um, so I did notice that some of the lettering was a little bit hard to read. Uh, so I took a little Dremel tool and I kind of uh, cut away some of the uh, casting. And here we see a little bit of that Bondo. That's not rust. That's actual Bondo. I guess it's better than lead. Uh, lead's poisonous. So uh, then I uh, was able to get all of these screws out. Nothing was really uh, rusted in place. Nothing that a little WD-40 uh, couldn't handle. Uh, even the teeth of the vise were in good shape. They're a little bit of a softer metal, but... Uh, they were, it was intact and uh, nothing broken uh, on, on anything like that. So uh, just wire brush the, um, the slide here. Uh, this is all cast, uh, cast iron. I believe the, it's a, like a steel insert surrounded by cast, but um, it cleaned up uh, really nice. Here's one side, here's the other side. So um, I was using a, a Scotch-Brite pad in addition to the steel wool. Here's, here's a Scotch-Brite pad in action attached to the angle grinder. I believe it was a... Um, coarse no i'm sorry fine a fine scotch bright pad uh then uh, there was a lot of grease in the slide so i used just a little acetone cleaned up the slide uh, slide cleaned up really nice no damage uh, none of the crack none of the castings were were cracked all of that grease came off nice here it is finished uh, and it actually turned out great i mean it looked rusty it looked kind of cruddy uh, but it was just surface rust and uh the scotch bright pad works uh really really good Taking away just a little bit of the paint here. Uh, I would recommend those scotch Bright pads. They're just hard enough to take away the rust and the old paint, uh, but not hard enough to to hurt the cast iron or the steel. You could, Every once in a while, a spark would fly off, but not very often. This is the bottom of the base. This was a little bit locked up, uh, but WD-40 and uh, my biggest adjustable wrench, and I was able to open it up. And uh, when I got inside of this thing, there was a little bit of a surprise, uh, which you'll see in just a second. Uh, but that nut came loose. I was very happy uh, that didn't snap on there. It's cast, so cast is pretty brittle. The nut, I mean, look at that. That's just, uh, you know, 1930 uh, is how old this vice is. And that's uh, 90 years old. I uh, can't beat those old parts. This part I thought was broken, but actually when I compared uh, my vice to other vices, they are, there are only three three brackets. Uh, but it was very rough. It was a very rough casting. Here's a surprise on the inside of the base. I have no idea how old this wasp nest is. But uh, there's a close-up. Those are some really creepy-looking alien-like creatures uh, on the inside of that uh, of the base. Really gross. One thing I did not do, I did not get these little, I guess you could like call them drum pads, uh, that are part of the swivel. I couldn't get them out. I figured that the, way I, I, the best I could figure was they were press-fitted in and maybe the end of that uh, nut was peened in. I figured I could have added some heat to it, but I didn't want to crack the base. Like I said, it's cast. Cast is brittle. So I figured I could just clean it up in place uh, and, and lube it up, and it would be good to go. So I, uh, I cleaned up as much as I could. All of the exposed surfaces, all of the surface rust came off, and, and it was was great. Um, I, hit, uh, I decided to go black and silver, so I hit everything uh, that was cast with a primer first, uh, an enamel-based primer. Uh, Rust-Oleum product 
Uh, and everything that was steel, I just cleaned up with a wire brush or that Scotch pad. And I used just a clear coat of um, clear semi-gloss enamel, uh, again, a rust oleum product. Uh, this is part of the swivel base. This is the little brake pad. Uh, this is the little part that causes the brake pads to engage. As you thread it in, as you thread that little nut, the bolt in, this rises up and actually locks those brake pads into place, causing the base to not swivel. Loosening it up, lowers it, and then frees those brake pads. Uh, so that cleaned up really nice, a piece of steel. Not even going to be seen, but I just wanted to get the rust off of it. That's in the base. And this is the, the nut that was on the bottom of the base and uh, cleaned up uh, very nice as well. And I, I went back and forth with how I was going to paint it, but I decided all the steel parts would be clear coated. And uh, I thought that would make a nice contrast against the black uh, of the cast iron parts. The uh, handle was rough, but it, nothing, uh, it wasn't broken, thankfully. And uh, just painted all the steel again with this. This is the clear that I used. Uh, so that was great. I do uh, know that. Uh, a Charles Parker 975 vise like I have comes with a little bit of a like a little wrench uh, that you use to um, hit that that nut that engages the swivel. Mine did not come with that, so um, I'm just going to keep a, a adjustable wrench handy. Uh, here I'm taping off the jaws. I didn't want to paint the jaws. The jaws were made of steel, so those are going to get clear coated, and uh, the rest of the uh, cast parts. We're getting this Rust-Oleum primer first, followed by a coat of e enamel semi-gloss. Uh, in black. So all the, again, all the cast parts get black. Here's the product, high performance enamel by rust -Oleum. All of the um, cast iron parts get black and uh, all of the steel parts uh, were painted with just a uh, wire brushed, scotch padded and hit when uh, with a clear coat to protect it uh, more than anything. Uh, I do some blacksmithing and I do like to coat some of the blacksmithing projects uh, with that rust -Oleum. I think it lasts longer than your typical beeswax. Here is this swivel nut, and I just put some uh, Never Seize on it and went back into that. There's that little uh, pad that I use marine grease underneath to just uh, grease, basically. Like I said, I couldn't get this off. I didn't try too hard. I didn't want to break it or crack it. Everything was going too good. I didn't want to force it. So I just used this marine grease because I know uh, marine grease is uh, you know, designed to work in salt water environments and everything like that. So just coated all the parts that come into contact with each other, uh, reattached the swivel base. Use some never season the threads just so that the next guy that does this in a hundred years uh, won't have any problems uh, getting it off, and this thing will be uh, this puppy will be good to go. Uh, once it was done, I decided to just do a little bit of detail work. Hit a little micro brush, and I used some silver paint. I just wanted to take uh, one of those letters to stand out. I think uh, it's really cool that the cast actually has the name of the company, Charles Parker. It says Chaz Parker, it stands for Charles Parker. Uh, the date of the patent, 1930, and all that stuff. It just looks, I think it looks really cool. Creates a little bit of contrast. Uh, so it took a little bit of time, but it was well worth it. I used that same marine grease on this thread, uh, on, the, on the screw threads, and uh, worked excellent. And it just uh, everything went back together uh, really, really smooth. So that's the original nut on there. Didn't break. A little more marine grease. On the receiving end of the vise, and um, this is just a little bit of the reassembly. Everything went together great, and uh, I've seen some of these vices here and there. I think the model 975 is, I don't know if it's the biggest one, that the, the vise itself is 5 inches, and uh, this weighs a whopping 105 pounds, a lot bigger than uh, my vise uh, that I am replaced, replaced with this. So here it is, just a little bit. Here it is completed. This is what it looks like all around. Put a, I did put a coat of clear on every part just to protect it. It'll be inside, but I think it just looks looks great. Here it is next to, uh, it's not the oldest piece of uh, equipment in the shop. That uh, honor goes to my goes to my anvil, which is a Fisher & Norris anvil from 1840. Um, this is the bench that I mounted it on. And, um, it's real close to my anvil. That's, you can see it to the left there a little bit. So yeah, it looks really great in the shop. And it will definitely be being used for years to come. Swivel base is nice and smooth. All the action is smooth. Um, I'm super happy with how this turned out. I think uh, black and silver was the way to go. That was my wife's idea and uh, 
I asked for her input and she's seldom wrong. Here it is, the original. This is what it looked like when I first got it. Here it is, completed and finished. And I don't think I could be happier with the results. If you liked this video, consider subscribing and hit that like button. And if you didn't like this video, hit that like button anyways. Just kidding. Alright, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.